not be pleasing in his eyes. Let it be written to reverse the letters. They advised by Haman, the son of Amethada, the Agagite, which he wrote to destroy the Jews, which are in all the king's provinces. For how can I endure to see the evil that shall come upon my people? Or how can I endure to see the destruction of my kindred? Yeah. Tonight, if we pray for the briefly tonight, uh, take it to the king. Um, There's really uh, not a more appropriate passage in scripture uh, like Esther chapter number eight that really sets the tone for what we need to say uh, in the course of uh, this series, Saving the Black Family. And Esther is one of those books that has remained. It is a very historical book. It is a very profound, it is a very impactful book to the degree uh, that, that even when they were destroying the Jews in, in Germany, Hitler banned the book because he saw this book as a tool to empower the people of God. And he did not want them to read this particular book because his intentions, his objectives, was to destroy the Jews that live in Germany. Amen? So fear tends to drive other people to kill, to destroy, and to weaken other people. Amen, somebody? And so when the policy comes out first, it is an unspoken policy. Nobody says that. It's okay to be racist. It's okay to be prejudiced against another people. Amen, somebody? But it starts out with them doing whatever they want to do, whatever they see fit to do. Amen, somebody? But it can be embedded in the policy. Y'all say amen if you can. And so this particular book is a book whereby Haman has decided that he's going to destroy all of the Jews only because a man named Mordecai refused to bow down to him. And he said, I ain't going to bow down to nobody but my God. Amen, somebody? And because Haman had this complex uh, about himself, he had a, a prideful heart, he decided that since Mordecai won't bow down to me, I'm just going to kill him and all of his people. Amen? And so, but there's an, a protagonist in the text. The protagonist is Mordecai. Yeah. Mordecai is the uncle of Esther. Her real name is Hadassah. He's raising her because she doesn't have a father, she does not have a mother. But he has brought her up in the nurture and in the admonition of the Lord. He is the protagonist for the people of God. Amen, somebody? But along with that, Esther is the intercessor in the text. She is the one that has one foot in the kingdom and she has one foot with the common people. She has one foot in the kingdom and she has one foot with the common people. Y'all come on church. She is, she is related to the people that live out there, but yet she finds herself uh, in the royal palace. She is married to the king. She has a covenant relationship with him, but her heart is with her people. Oh, that sounds like Jesus Christ to me. Amen. He's the, he's the mediator because he understands the people. He's wrapped up in their flesh. He has their flesh. He has their blood. But at the same time, he is royal. He is the intercessor between God and man. Then you have the king, Ahasuerus, Xerxes number one. He has sovereign power. He has laws, and once he makes his laws, it is against the law for him to change the law. Because, because he is sovereign. And they have a, a, um, a, a dictum in the kingdom that says, King, once you make a law, you cannot reverse your law. Amen? And so we're in trouble here because Haman has gotten the king to sign a letter of several letters that said we're going to destroy all of the people of God. But Mordecai is out of the people of God. He says, listen, just like African American folk, we're struggling out here. It's bad out here. Amen, somebody? And the black families are struggling out here. And we see there is a disconnect between power and the people. There's a disconnect. And the people that have the power seem like they don't love, neither do they care about the people. Yeah. And y'all know African Americans have had this struggle for a long time. Amen, somebody. And, and the ghetto is defined as a powerless place. Yeah. 
and we have been struggling for years for power. Stuff that, that we deserve, stuff that belong to us, we have had to fight for the stuff. Amen, somebody? And not that we make excuses for anybody, but anytime you're oppressed and suppressed for 400 or so years, it has an effect on the black family. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. And that's why it's important for us to discuss this. That's why it's important for us to talk about this. Amen, somebody. Every other nation, every other race of people, they look out for themselves. Amen, somebody. They garner their own power. Amen, somebody. And they are represented in high places. But it's the African-American family that bear the brunt of oppression, suppression. We've been enslaved like no other people. Amen. We've done more and gotten less. Unlike any other people, amen, somebody. And when we strive and when we fight for power, we are resistant. We got to work twice as hard to get the same thing. First high, last high. Come on, somebody. Amen. Because there is a disconnect between the people and power. But we need somebody to intercede for us. Amen, somebody. And can't nobody help us like the Lord. I'm trying to get through this stuff. Y'all want to say it? Hold the ball tonight. Y'all got to say something.